All right. Monster Hunter Wilds, the fifth gen skill bloat and power creep by Rurikon. Shields up, Iron Breakers. Rurikon here coming at you with another video, and today we're going to be talking about the concept of skill bloat and power creep in the context of Monster Hunter Wilds. Now, Ooh. naturally, ever since we had the announcement of Monster Hunter Wilds, my brain's just been full speed ahead speculation mode. Mm -hmm. I'm always thinking about, ooh, wouldn't it be cool if we get like a full on open world with dynamic traversal and a friggin airship hub? You know, I've been making. Oh, that's actually really cool. I never thought about the airship hub. I mean, because initially when I first heard about Wilds and it being open world, I was like, oh, no, that was my knee jerk reaction because I have kind of came off of uh, playing a little bit of uh, Diablo 4, and that open world is, uh, you know, not the greatest, but I have played other games like Skyrim, Elden Ring, and those open worlds are pretty fun. Um, but I don't know. So I've always, like, watched Monster Hunter in the past, but it like very casually, if anything, but the world was the first monster hunter game that I actually like decided to give like a good old try and whatnot. And it, it was awesome. I loved it. I mean, yes, there were like some growing pains, but like, I forgot, like, I think it was like a couple hours in, I started to understand like how, immersive world was and how each map um like what the point of each map was supposed to do in that it, it just provides you like a little sandbox to hunt a monster all right like i have seen my buddy play old old like way older monster hunters in the past to the point where like you gotta like throw paintballs and you gotta chase the monster around all these little like paint drippings and whatnot. If a monster runs away, it essentially was like just running to like a random zone. It would just like fly off into the distance and then go somewhere. And unless you had a paintball on it, you could, it was like really tough to like track the monster. It wasn't all this like worlds, like footprints and whatever's. So I thought it was like a really hard game at the time, but, but yeah, I'm just like ranting. Um, I like the complexity of, of the maps of world, like world and Iceborne. And I actually like the verticality and the little tiny tunnels and hallways. And then it'll like branch out, like any hallway will branch out into like almost like a little arena to where you can fight a monster. And my question for wild would be if everything is open world, in my mind, I'm thinking like MMO, flat planes, no hallways, no verticality. Um, just not the same level of like handcrafted, you know, perspective and I don't know, exploration that uh, World and Iceborne has uh, like provided. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm just like ran like 23 minutes seconds in the video for monster Hunter wilds because you know it's going to be a rough wait until we get the summer 2024 to actually know more about what we can expect for the game and until then there's definitely going to be more speculation videos here on the channel and if you're interested in those do remember hit the like button subscribe bell notification icon all that jazz shameless plugs aside mm -hmm. let's talk about skill blood so you see Back in the day, skills used to work very differently for Monster Hunter. As a matter oh. of fact, in order for you to activate the skill, you needed to get that specific skill all the way up to plus 10. You oh, could... Jesus. So in order for... God dang. That sounds like a like a challenge. Holy crap. You couldn't just pick up a piece of gear and it's like, oh, now I have plus one attack. That's not exactly how it worked. As a matter of fact getting all the way up to plus nine attack would actually do absolutely nothing for your character. Jesus. You need to get up to plus 10, I think, in order to be able to get a small boost to attack. Then you would need <laughs> to get up to like plus 15 in order to get a medium boost to attack and all the way up to plus 20 to get a large boost to attack, which would be something okay. similar to like attack plus seven now in the game, maybe. I can, I can understand the thought process behind that type of uh, 
I don't know, skill, um, I don't know, divvying out of skills like that, because if you like look at all the weapons, all the weapons should be able to kill a monster without all those like extra skills that we see in World and, and in Rise. Um, like back in the day, or like at least the old Monster Hunter games. Like the pl the player probably had like X amount of power, and how they balance the game out would probably be like, okay, at any moment in time, the hunter should be able to kill most, if not almost all the monsters, uh, like in the game, except for like, I don't know, maybe like five or 10% where you actually have to, I don't know, farm for like some gear or like a certain stat or whatever. But there wasn't all of this, uh, what do you call it? It's like, like your, your character is pretty much complete when, when you start the game, but like all those like extra little skill ups, like attack plus one on like this piece of armor, this piece of armor, that piece of armor, it probably like, it probably didn't make that much of a, of a difference. Your character was like pretty much there and any type, anytime you wanted to upgrade a little piece of gear, it'd be like a, a little bit, like a little bit of extra. Something along those lines. And you might be thinking, wow, that sounds absolutely miserable. But the reality was that getting a skill up to plus 10 to the point where it would actually activate and have any kind of effect on your character mm -hmm. actually felt great because it was, oh, I finally activated one of my skills. Let's see how many more I'm going to be able to activate. And by the end of the game, like uh -huh. by the time you would reach end game, most sets would usually get somewhere around like four fully activated skills or five okay. depending on which skills you were trying to shoot for or maybe it wouldn't even, it wouldn't even be that much maybe you would have like three fully activated skills and then one more skill where you didn't have it like fully activated yeah. it would have like a more minor effect or something along those lines and that would usually be the way that you would go about making your sets and you guys might be thinking wow four or five skills that actually doesn't seem like very much but that is coming from the perspective from someone that has played world and then implementing the world power creep onto an older game where that's you don't really need to like take this thought process from world like oh i need a uh, crit eye crit boost wex uh, all this other shit agitator and whatnot just to be able to compete it's like no you don't really need all those they're just like little pluses i don't even need all these skills i can just kill the monster without them they're just nice because that is how the power creep worked in the older games. And it's not. As a matter of fact, if I showed you guys what uh, my current sets are for like Endgame in both Monster Hunter World Iceborne as well as Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, I think you guys are going to be very surprised. I mean, those of you that played all the way to Endgame, you're probably not going to be that <laughs> surprised. So here we have the skills that I am using in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Dang, look at this. Red I-7, Agitator Secret, Artillery Secret, Slinger Capacity Secret, Jesus. Tool Specialist Secret, Wex, Evade Window, Evade Extender, Boost, ooh, only the two. A capacity Boost, Flinch Free, Guard Up. Yeah, that's a lot of skills. And you don't need like plus 10, plus 15, plus 20. Uh, I like 14, 15, 15 19. 20, so it's about 43 pointy points so it is probably similar to the amount of points that you got into older games they just made it that made it so that you actually gain uh like in slowly progressive increasing levels of power because that's, and this is probably like a, this is probably, they made it like this because it was like, it probably was like a little more casual friendly like this. Um, and this is uh, like been an argument in like every video game. Who do you make the game for? The casual audience, which is like 90% or the 10% of the audience that is like super hardcore. Um, and I think the only reason we're having this conversation is because uh, World and Iceborne and Rise and Sunbreak started popping off. 
and they started doing really good. And so when a game usually pops off like that, it's it's probably not uh, like that hard for most people. Like there's like some degree of difficulty, but like for the most part, most people will be able to like get a pretty far like distance into the game. Whereas if you take something like other, a, another game that's like ridiculously hard, like I don't know, like some Dark Souls game or Sekiro, I always hear that one is like a really hard one. Um, something like I want to be the Boshi or, or something like that. Just a really hard game. You just bash your head against it for hours. Um, something like that is probably like those type of games probably won't pierce through the mainstream you know of like normie people that, that like play the game or whatever so i can understand why they made it from having only like four skills and like 40 like points like chunked into these like little slots right here it's like oh let's just give the player a little bit of power for like it, it, like one point for some skills other skills you know you get seven and honestly i think this is a great decision because i actually found monster hunter or, or, yeah, I found Monster Hunter World because the game was more casual friendly. By the time that I stopped playing the game, we have Critical Eye 7, Agitator Level 7, Artillery Level 5, Slinger Capacity Level 5, Tool Specialist Level 5, Weakness Exploit Level 3, Evade Window Level 3, Evade Extender Level 3, Critical Boost Level 2, Capacity Boost, Flinch Free Guard Up. And then we still had, whenever we would uh, put up certain mantles, we would have recovery oh, up, yeah. as well as two points in Divine Blessing. We also have two uh, set bonuses coming in from Four Piece oh, Fatalis yep. Legend, where we have Inheritance and Transcendence, which is Dang. actually the stuff that allows us to reach skill levels as high as you guys have seen up until this point. Mm -hmm. And this is Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Little set uh, bonuses. With, you know, like a fully decked out end game. And this is probably not even that well optimized because at the end of the day i never really chased them yeah it's it's got like most of the, the the main damaging abilities and then everything else is like either mandatory for the class and it's either mandatory for the class or the, or the weapon and then there's other stuff that's like uh, comfy makes the build feel just it makes the weapon feel and play better that's that's all it is meta that much but it's still a tremendous amount of skills available when you compare it to the amount of stuff that you can get from something like, say, Generations Ultimate, right? Then if we look at one of the builds that I had in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, I actually don't have my Switch close to me, so I'm just going to go get a build that I found off of one of my videos, which mm -hmm. I know that I have a better build by now on my Switch save, but this should also just paint you a very good picture. So we're coming up in here with Guard 5, Resuscitate 3, Mind's Eye. Okay, so I haven't played Rise in a while. I'm part of the whole crew of Return to World. So I'm playing World right now, like on a second profile. My first profile has like 500 hours or whatever. This one, I'm up to like 100 and loving the game again. Um, I played Rise, but, and I, I beat the game, but I didn't play it into Sunbreak mainly because my buddy stopped playing. So it's like, eh, whatever. So I only played like, apparently there, it goes up to like 3.0 for Sunbreak. So if that's the case, I only played the end game of 1.0. Three, Guard Up 3, Artillery 3, Part Breaker 3, Wirebug Whisperer 3, Coalescence 3, Defiance 3, Sneak Attack 3. Oh my, look at this. He, he had me in the first half. <laughs> oh my God, is this the whole list? Okay, so let me see. Uh, 5, 8, 11, 14, 17, 8, 9, 20, 22, 23, 4, 5, 6, 6, 6, 7, 8, 8, 9, 30, 1, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 7, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. So you got 45 points in this build, whereas the other one had about 41. So, yep, you're getting a little bit of more uh, skills. I can see, I can see the, the skill creep, the power creep, or not skill creep, power creep. 
3, Powder Mantle 3, Heaven Sent level 3, which by the way is absolutely brutal, has a skill which basically you don't need to sharpen ever again. Dang. But, you know, just to keep things going. Then we have Load Shells level 2, Evade Extender level 2, Embolden level 2, Critical Boost level 1, Weakness Exploit level 1, Defense Boost level 1, Sleep Resistance level 1. This is kind of like some trash skills. What? It doesn't really matter. There's more? 43. Or wait, no, what I say? 45? 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 152. Jesus. 52 points up from the what was it 40 what i say 41 plus 11 points of just bullshit even though they're like trash whatever i mean i don't know how good these any of these skills are um compared to uh, what do you call it like the older games where you would probably have like i don't know maybe 40 points or something like total yeah rise sunbreak it it does seem <laughs> like there is just so much like just stuff they're just throwing at you and I don't know I never really thought I never really took into account if power creep was happening because I don't know I just played base game and I thought it was fine but then we also have bloodlust which is important intrepid heart level one wind mantle level one and frenzied bloodlust level one i'm winded just from reading all of that stuff. Okay? <laughs> this is the ridiculous amount of skills that that we're getting both in monster hunter world as well as monster hunter rise sunbreak now i understand that for a lot of people if you've started with monster hunter world maybe yep. you're actually of the opinion that this is the right way to go and I'm not I don't going know. to completely disagree with you. I'm just putting forward the question. Is this what we want as a community? I'm like uh, the whole thing with uh, the power creep and whatnot. Like. So I would say Monster Hunter kind of falls in line as like a um, what do you call it? Like a Souls like ish game. I mean, more or less, you know, you go on quest, kill monster and then come back. All right, you get the monster has like a move set of like 15 to 20 moves. You got to look at them, understand them and maneuver and deal damage and all that jazz. Much the same way of like any souls like or Elden Ring. Um, but there was another game that came out that was a souls like, but was very like, I don't know, divisive in how it executed. It's like power gain or progression. And I think it was like life of Pi. So life of pi i mean i didn't play it but from what i understand it you have like a base character but you have so many skill trees and essentially what you're doing is you're just gaining power or 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 whatever it's not necessarily damage it could be like how your character moves the iframes you gain like abilities um but every little bit of power gain makes it seem that you're just simply returning the, the character in comparison to another game to like an older state of, uh, uh, like in an older, like a, a, I don't know, what do you call it? Uh, an older Dark Souls game. So like the older Dark Souls games, you just have your character. Yes, you have your souls and your level up system and stats and all that, but your dodge distance doesn't change. Your, your iframes don't change. You have like set abilities and it's just there. That's the character. Figure it out. There was never this whole, my kid, like if like an old dark souls character was like this big or like that big. And, but now you have this, like, I don't know, like monster hunter world and rise sunbreak and I don't know, life of pie characters that start off this big. They want, they are simply telling you or asking you, to like build your character up to be like you know to you know go back to that older character like with all the abilities and whatnot they, they just simply want you to build up your character as opposed to just giving you like a stock character it's all that doesn't need to be built or anything like that um and i think it's fine to build up the character a little bit like your character will have like some amount of attack depending on like what weapon you play with 
some amount of dodge you know you have all this she thing like weapon draw speed and defenses and, and whatnot you know some amount of skills but you know i'm cool with like a little bit of power gain but it, it honestly seems <laughs> and i didn't really get it i mean i will i'll probably go back and play rise sunbreak i didn't get it until you just showed me that picture of like the three uh like things with f upwards of like 50 plus points in skills like that's crazy you know i have my own personal preferences i would act i would actually like to see things dialed back down a little bit more and we'll talk more about that but I think it's perfectly fine if people feel like, no, this is what we want. We want hell. We want even more skills. We want to be able to get like all of the skills <laughs> in the game and activate every single one of them to the nth degree and just brutalize the monster all the way into friggin' next year or something. Yeah, like there's that. nothing wrong with letting your players become powerful. Um, like a really good example is, uh, what do you call it? Borderlands, Borderlands 2, like 1, 2, and 3. In the beginning, you're having to use a bunch of tactics. You don't have anything in your skill trees. You're just like going off of like just raw gunplay. But the more you level up, the more you go into your skill trees, and then you get multiple skill trees, and you can almost get all three skill trees. You can get, I think you can get like two and a half. And then on top of that with the skill trees, you get all these different good-ass guns on top of it. You can literally just cruise through the game on autopilot and the game lets you do that so and i had a lot of fun in borderlands so i don't know it's a good question to ask like should you, like at end game i don't know what do you call it i don't know like at mid game or at end game gear do you want the player to be struggling still or do you want the player to be like just super power powerful and like just not give a shit about whatever monster they're fighting like that right if that is what you want i'm very interested in hearing about it as well as hearing about why because for me i kind of feel like the one of the things about making a build is being able to balance positive aspects and negative aspects which we don't really have any negative aspects anymore now i know that a lot of people want me to talk about the potential mm -hmm. for negative skills making a comeback oh i think oh, was that, that a thing is sailed i don't really think we're going to be seeing negative skills in a monster hunter game which for those of you that are not familiar with that particular concept the idea would be for instance if you wanted to get something like razor sharp Mm -hmm. It would be very hard for you to get both Razor Sharp as well as Sharpness. Now, there are certain sets that you can play around. Ooh, okay. I'm sure that people that have played Generations Ultimate will be familiar with the concept of the Shogun Sianator set mixed in with the Devil Joe set, and you'd be able to kind of like get those two very much wanted skills, but it was kind of hard to get those skills because what would happen would be if... It the, honestly, the whole Kiss Curse thing, um, didn't World of Warcraft do this? And I don't know how relevant this is to the conversation, but I don't know. Some people liked it. Some people didn't like it with, um, what was it? Was it, it wasn't corruption gear, but there was something along the lines of that. Like there, there are other games that do the whole kiss curse thing, but when you introduce the whole kiss curse thing, um, I think it opens up, um, a level that kind of favors the, I don't know, hardcore player side as opposed to the casual side. I don't know. I, like if, if I could see like the type of system and kind of like figure it out, I don't know. I'd be, I don't think it'd be like that bad, but I don't know. That is an interesting, uh, concept to maybe, maybe they'll do that in wilds. Who knows? If a piece of armor would give you plus sharpness, it would usually also remove points for razor sharp. And because you needed to get to a certain point, like I said, plus 10, plus 15, plus 20, mm -hmm. depending on the skill that we're talking about, because you needed to reach that threshold, it would make it harder for you to reach that threshold whilst also having another skill that would kind of take away from that skill. Another... Um, also, if, if the devs try to go that route, people are just going to uh, lean even more into the, the meta of the game. I mean, you see like the meta of Monster Hunter World Iceborne and people are, you know, 
always running around with like all offensive abilities and no defensive or utility things. And then they sit there and wonder why they die. It's like, oh, this is meta. I'm supposed to be doing really good. It's like, well, yeah, but the guys that are running the meta stuff, they know the monsters move sets and know how to position themselves. Um, so like the meta won't always be like the best thing for you as a player, at least in monster hunter world. Um, but it, I don't know if they, if they really do introduce the whole kiss curse thing, it, like players are just going to lean into like, the meta more. Another thing could potentially be, I think that sometimes if you had attack up, it would take away like critical eye or something like that. That was the effect of negative skills and to the point where you could even get activations on negative skills. So if you would get a skill to like negative 10, it would actually have a really bad impact on your character. Well, <laughs> depending on what you were doing, because in some situations it could actually be positive. So there was a little bit of a, of a back and forth when it came to that. But that's the point that I'm trying to, to make, right? It would, mm -hmm. it would be a balancing act for you to make your perfect build. And, you know, the perfect build would still have a certain amount of weaknesses. Whereas nowadays, it just feels like most builds just end up going for attack plus seven, critical eye plus seven, critical boost plus three, you know, uh, weakness exploit, and pretty much all of the offensive skills that you could possibly want. Yeah. Like if you're playing Rise Sunbreak, you could get that and you could still get full on agitator and pretty much every other offensive skill that you could potentially ever want for your build. Put that together in one build <laughs> where it would have virtually no weaknesses whatsoever, which is kind of strange. I kind of feel like doing the whole balancing act thing would be a little bit cooler, but I'm also curious to hear from you guys as to how you feel about it. Because to me, I feel like if we were, if we were to cap skills, like let's say you're able to max out five, six skills or something like that then you're mm -hmm. going to be forced to select a little bit better because right now you can get a lot of the utility skills if we think about something like rise sunbreak a lot of weapons actually require a uh, utility skill so for instance long sword requires you to have uh speed sheathing if you're doing charge blade you're going to need to have uh what was it called quick switch the the morph speed thing up mm -hmm. You know, and every weapon had something like that. And I kind of feel like one of the reasons why the developers decided to implement this was potentially even to combat the fact that, you know, this skill bloat is getting completely out of hand. Like, if you think about it, the uh, the charge blade, for instance, right? If you're playing charge blade in Monster Hunter World, you don't really need any specific skill to make the charge blade, you know, flow seamlessly. On the other hand, if you're playing Rise Sunbreak, you're probably going to want to have Quick Switch because otherwise your swapping is going to take significantly longer. Ooh, Same okay. thing for the Switch Axe, I would imagine. Uh, so, you know, there, there's a little bit of back and forth there, and it does feel like some of these skills were implemented into Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, and Rise and Sunbreak specifically to kind of like curb the, the ridiculous skill bloat and power creep that we're getting. But then you get to the end game and you start in getting involved with like curious crafting and all that stuff and things just go completely out of control. Like <laughs> another charm. example of this would be how in the Gunlands, you know, load shells or a magazine used to be just like a one two piece deco. Whereas in Rise Sunbreak, it's actually two points to get that guard up used to just be one uh, po one point. And now it's three points and the effect isn't even as, as powerful as it used to be. Okay. So it does feel like Capcom is trying to combat this. But in a lot of ways, to me, it's just like we just need to, you know, have less skills, but make those skills more meaningful as opposed to what we did with Rise Sunbreak, where a lot of the skills became less meaningful and required more point investment. And at the end of the day, you know, you still end up with all the skills that you could possibly ever want. That's yeah. another thing. Like, I hope Curious Crafting doesn't come back at all <laughs> because I did not have a good time <laughs> playing around with that system. Yeah. But like when I played Rise and I, I eventually did like beat the game and I got to like the point where the, the Curious Crafting where all you do is just like, uh, if I recall correctly, you just kill monsters or like high level monsters get the rewards and then and then essentially you just put them into the, the curious crafting gamble machine and then you could like kind of uh uh like weigh it to whatever skill you wanted i think 
and then it's just a, like a slot machine. Like, hopefully I get the charm. And, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, it's either RNG from, I'm like, RNG from, like, charms or RNG for, for decos in the two games. Um, I mean, either way, you're, you're killing monsters. So, like, if you're trying to farm decos, you're, you're essentially spamming, like, anywhere from, like, one to, like, depending on what master rank you are, you're spamming anywhere from, like, one to, I don't know, a three or four specific quests, and you're killing, like, the same monsters over and over again. So, you just have a good chance to get, like, uh, like a good deco drop. Um, in the Curious Crafting, what are you doing? You're probably killing the same, like, I don't know, anywhere from, like, one to five of the same types of monsters over and over again. Whichever ones get you the most materials, high-level materials, or the ones you, you need specifically. And you're putting them in the slot machine and hoping uh, the correct charm uh, pops out. So, I mean, essentially, you're doing the same thing. I think the main issue that people have with the two types of systems or just the chances of you getting the right charm or the chances of you getting the right deco people were i mean i'm kind of in this boat too like some of the chances for both of these things is like ridiculous dude like i i don't remember if i ever got like the like the my i think i played dual blade in uh in rise and i forgot what the meta charm is in like 1.0 i don't remember if i ever got it but Bro, trying to get like a single crit boost gem in world or like I, I I think I'm in like my second profile is like 90 something hours in and I just got like one crit boost deco and that's fine. It's a really good skill. Um, But a lot of the other good skills are like the little four slot combo ones where you need like, I don't know, like the correct combo of skills to like just like pile on or whatever and some of the some of the chances are just like egregious and it's it's really annoying I'm curious to hear from you guys do you think that we should go back and i'm not saying go back to the point where like oh yeah we need to stack plus 10 attack in order to be able to you know to, to get like one little bit of attack i think that the new skill system works pretty good in terms of presenting the skills to the players mm -hmm. i just feel like once you start getting into master rank and whatnot that the skills just get a little bit out of control and the amount of skills that you can achieve with certain sets mm -hmm. are a little bit too much i wanted to see in in future monster hunters i want there to be like maybe even some clear disadvantages like hey if you're playing with artillery maybe you you know you deal less attack damage but at that point you have to make artillery be more meaningful so you have to make a choice do you mm -hmm. want to have the true damage of, of an artillery weapon or do you want to do like a more hybrid play style and do you want to go for more attack i think that That's these fair. are all valid things having actually to make choices as opposed to just like no i'm just gonna go ahead and grab all of the possible skills that i could ever want put those into <laughs> a build and i'm good to go but again this is just me theory crafting and thinking about all of the different things that we might be getting with Monster Hunter Wilds. What would you prefer in your personal opinion? Do you want to go like all out Fatalis levels and we want to have every single skill in the game or? <laughs> but I mean, isn't Fatalis like the last monster or was it like Fatalis and then Arch Tempered Velcana? Because I never killed Fatalis or Arch Tempered Velcana. So I wouldn't know, but I mean, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world to have, like, the last monster have, like, the best stuff. But I don't know. I, I don't know. I'd have to think about it more. Because, yes, if you go with that, what I said, like, it's okay for having the last monsters give, like, the best shit. Then, I mean, because you earned it. Like, either, like, you played everything by yourself, like, solo self-found, or you play with your buddies or whatever um it's like hey you got up there and you earned it why not have a big payoff right there as opposed to okay i'm just gonna have some sort of like low leaning linear progression and then oh it's the last boss hopefully you can beat him with this low level uh stuff and then hey you did great and then here's like maybe like a little uh, like a cookie 
here's like a little gold star like a plus one little deco slot on like the the fatalis gear but it's not going to be anything crazy i don't know that is a good question would you rather dial things back a little bit more and have more restricted, uh, a more restricted amount of skills in order to make things be a little bit more different? Because, you know, if everybody can get attack up seven, critical boost seven, wex three, critical, but well, not critical boost seven, critical I seven, uh, wex three, critical boost, is it really meaningful? It just, I mean, I think you have to take that with a grain of salt in that. If you, when you say you let everybody just get all the offensive abilities, everybody doesn't have all the offensive abilities. Like when a player goes through the game or, or let's say day one on wild's release or, or not even wilds, uh, day one on like monster hunter player numbers are through the roof. As time goes on, players are just going to drop off and fall off because that's just how every video game goes ever. Um, like there's going to be fewer and fewer players playing. And there's going to be some level of players that just keep sticking to it, keep sticking to it. The longer you play, the more powerful you get. Um, and maybe by the time, like a lot of the, you know, the dedicated or the hardcore fans, uh, let's say like just stick around. What's wrong with them having like a bunch of offensive skills or whatever? I mean, they earned it, right? I mean, if you take like some player that's like stuck in mid game, I'm pretty sure they're not all like crit eyed out of the and crit boost out of their mind with like all the, the offensive abilities or whatnot. I know I'm not. <laughs> um, but I don't know. It's just it. I don't know. It's a good question, and I'd have to think about it more. This kind of becomes the baseline for most of the weapons. Just get all of the raw damage skills, right? But anyway, just let me know in the comment section what you guys think about that. Happy holidays. Uh, you know, hopefully you guys spend some time with your families and all that. Thank you all very much for watching. Stay strong. Stay safe. Peace out. Nice. Uh, yeah, that is a good question. With uh, the whole power creep thing. I mean, it kind of seems like from the beginning in the early games, you had about more or less 40 points of skills uh, to like mess around with. It just so happens that you had to like divvy them in such a way that you needed 10 to like activate it and whatnot. So I don't know, maybe they toned down the skills a little bit with like, I mean, cause like what rise had like 50 something. I mean, but that's up from like 41 and 41 is a, around the same level than like the beginning of the game so it, it seems like they have a good idea of like the amount of skill points that they want to give the player with the the skill system and it seems like 40 to 50 seems like about right because if i remember um what was it didn't like a lot don't a lot of games that have skill trees have about like 40 or 50 points even like old school like world of warcraft like vanilla tbc and like wrath wasn't it, didn't though those like skill trees have like 40 or 50 points to like mess around with and you just cruise down the tree and then maybe cruise down on another one. So it's not like, it might be a case of like World of Warcraft, <laughs> like, uh, like with Rise Sunbreak versus Wrath of the Lich King. Like in Wrath of the Lich King, the, the trees were just getting so like enormously long. Like that they just had to give you like plus 10 points for, because you, it was like plus 10 levels, plus 10 levels, plus 10 points. Oh, great. So I am kind of curious and, uh, and you know, they, they rolled that back uh, as we saw with World of Warcraft. Maybe if they are smart, they will have the foresight to see that and be like, oh, we can't, we can't like next game. We can't give out, we can't have the players having like end game gear and like 60 skills like 60 points worth of skills on there because that's like ridiculous so i don't know i, I really don't want to see all of that uh like in there to like the skill points to reach like that levels of like ridiculousness it's like okay <laughs> but uh no yeah i thought this was a good video good um uh insight good questions hopefully they figure it out in wilds but uh yeah that's pretty much it uh i look forward to 
seen any more videos like this. I like the little conversation pieces, but uh, yeah, uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. All right, later.